To get regular updates, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon. Hello friends, this is Manohar Vira from Exambin. We have seen about United Nations in our first few lessons on this international organization series. In this lesson, we are going to see about a closely related organization WTO, World Trade Organization, that controls the intercontinental and inter-country trade relationship across the globe. Before continuing to the session, if you have not subscribed to Examin channel yet, please click on the subscribe button below. Okay, let's get started. WTO was officially commenced on 1st January 1995 under the Marrakesh Agreement. Replacing the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, that is GATT, which commenced in 1948. WTO is an organization that intends to supervise and liberalize international trade. Its headquarters is situated in Geneva, Switzerland. Its official languages are English, French and Spanish. Now we are going to see about the evolution of WTO. In 1944, Britain Woods Conference wanted to make ITO International Trade Organization, but the United States did not ratify it. Thus, GOT was born as a stopgap agreement. In 1947, General Agreement on Trade and Tariffs, that is GATT, established aimed to reduce barriers to international trade. In 1986, Uruguay Round of Talks has brought service and intellectual property rights related topics included in the debate. In 1993, everyone agreed on it. Marrakesh Treaty under the Uruguay Round of Talks at Morocco has happened. All nations signed on the agreement and WTO was established officially on January 1st, 1995. India is also one among the founding members of World Trade Organization. Let's look at the WTO structure. The three important wings of WTO are Ministerial Conference, General Council and Director General. The Ministerial Conference has the supreme decision-making body in WTO. It has 160 members. The latest to join in the board is Amen, which has a capital of Sana. The Ministerial Conference meets every two years and it deliberates on trade agreements it appoints the Director General. General Council It carries down the day-to-day -day decision-making operations. It meets regularly at Geneva, implements decision of ministerial conferences. It has representative from each member's country. It has two bodies with separate chairmen. One is Dispute Settlement Body and the other one is Trade Policy Review Body. And the third important member of this WTO is Director General which is who is appointed by Ministerial Conference and he has four years term and the head secretariat at Geneva. Before we are going to understand the WTO's functions, we have to look at some important terms in this international trade. All of the countries want to protect domestic industries and prevent entry of foreign players. So they create two types of barriers to international trade. The one is tariff barriers. When the government puts heavy import duty or custom duty on foreign products, which protects domestic players from competition from foreign players. The other one is non-tariff barriers. When domestic players are given subsidies, preference over foreign players by government. Or for example, when the government is buying some phones or Xerox machines in the tender, the government would mention that only domestic companies' quotes will be taken into account. So in this case, no foreign company can quote for a order, so the domestic companies will get preference. And while making policies in a way that it's hard for foreign player to start a factory or introduce a product in India. We will now look at the key functions of WTO. To reduce the barriers to international trade, both tariff barriers and non-tariff barriers, and get the members into the multilateral trade agreements. Provide forum for negotiation and dispute settlement for members if agreements are violated. Ensuring the developing countries benefiting from the world trade, especially the least developed countries. And to cooperate with United Nations, World Bank, 
and International Monetary Fund for a global economic policy that improves livelihood, protects environment and promotes sustainable development. There are two safety protection agreements with regards to tariff and non-tariff barriers. One is non-food products based one that is technical barriers to trade agreement also known as TBT and it is based on quality and durability. The other one is for food products that known as sanitary and phytosanitary measures agreement shortly known as SPS and it is based on hygiene and quality. We will now see a flowchart of WTO agreements various agreements. WTO agreements ranges from goods, services, IPR, dispute settlement, policy review and plurilateral. In goods we have GATT agreements on agricultural, textile, anti-dumping and then safety agreements as we discussed earlier TBT and SPS and then TRIMS and SCM. In agriculture we have further three kind of agreements green blue and amber agreement on agriculture the WTO wants to reduce the import duty on agricultural products it wants to reduce the export subsidies it wants to reduce amber box subsidies that is domestic subsidies in green box Agricultural, research and development, training programs, flood drought relief to farmers, subsidies that don't disrupt the trade balance or cause minimum damage to the trade balance is known as green box in agriculture. There is no specific limit specified by WTO in these regards. And it is the same case in the blue box also. It is Subsidies that don't increase with the production is comes under blue box. For example, subsidies linked with acreage or number of animals. The amber type subsidies that aim to limit the production is comes under the blue box category. The only category that has limitations is amber box and its subsidies that disturb trade balances like subsidies on fertilizers, seeds, powers and irrigation. By these, countries' products become cheaper than others in the international market, so WTO is setting a limit on these kind of products. Especially in amber box, the minimal amounts of amber box subsidies permitted by WTO even though they distort trap. It is calculated on the agricultural production of the given member state in the basis of 1986-88. The limits are for developed countries 5%, developing countries 10%. For least development, for least developed countries they were exempted. So what is India's stand on this? In 1986, USA agricultural production was far ahead of India, so their 5% de minimize quota, quota will be far bigger than our 10% quota. Input costs have skyrocketed in these decades, but de minimis doesn't consider inflation factor. So if India has to limit its amber box agro subsidies to a non-inflation adjusted to 86th production, 1986 production, we cannot continue the minimum support price to farmers or food security to poor. You know in India we provide minimum support price for farmers for wheat for rice for various other agro products and we also have strong food security programs to poor people these subsidized food grind are meant for feeding the poor only they do not distort the international trade so india is not going to find the amber box d minimus limits so then happened bali summit and the peace class in indonesia it's a trade facilitation agreement to cut down the red tape in customs clearance. The least developed countries exporters will get duty-free, quota-free access to markets in foreign countries. The peace class is no member can drag any developing country to dispute settlement mechanism of WTO for violation of de minimis limits provided that the said developing country is paying subsidies for staple food crops for public stack holding program 
and food security purpose is providing annual information of its food security program to WTP. Now we will look at some information regarding this trade facilitation agreement. Member nations to publish a detailed list of procedure for import export, fees, inspection rules and penalties. It has to minimize the proof documents and clearance required for custom clearance. And it must it must provide electronic payment of fees, duties, taxes and reduce red tabs and bureaucratic hassles in custom clearance. Set up a single window mechanism to help traders submit all the documents at a single point, preferably online. And providing faster customs clearance to perishable goods like fruits, vegetables and flowers. And give advanced ruling as and wherever applicable. Traders should be notified immediately if goods are detained at customs. The least developed countries will get financial and technical help to comply with the above rules. Its benefits are increasing the global GDP by $1 trillion, almost equal to 65 lakh crore, and more jobs, approximately 21 million. The deadline was usually fixed by 2014, July 31st, but India roofed, and then the agreement became effective from 2015. India refused to sign the trade facilitation agreement because the agreement maintains that it doesn't diminish the rights and obligations of members under other agreements of WTO. For example, under the agreement on agriculture, if a developing country is giving amber box subsidies beyond 10% of its national agricultural production, then the other members will be justified in putting trade sanction or WTO complaint against the said country. Once India has signed the trade facilitation agreement, the developed countries may stonewall their demands for a rational change in base year and ceiling limits on agro subsidies. Then India will have to cut down agro subsidies in minimum support price and food security programs, else they will put sanctions on us soon as peace class temporary deadline is over by 2017. And yet we will have to keep giving them easy customs clearance because we signed the trade facilitation agreement. Therefore, government has decided to use TFA signature as a bargaining chip for a permanent solution of food subsidies issue. India and US agreed to resolve differences over public stock holding for food security under WTO. As per the deal agreed between India and US, the peace class under Bali package will be allowed to continue in perpetuity and India's food security program will not be challenged under the WTO rules until a permanent solution to its found. However, bilateral agreement between India and US need an endorsement by 160 WTO members. The agreement will help pave the way for reaching a consensus on Bali package of WTO and help implement far-reaching reforms of custom rules under Trade Facilitation Agreement. Further, it will help India to continue its food security program and food subsidies. Friends, with this we have come to the end of this session. We will see you in the next session with a new topic. If you have not subscribed yet to our channel, please hit that subscribe button and also the bell icon to get regular notifications. Thank you.